Cool. So for the Blockchain Innovation Conference, I'm here at uh, Deliver. And Deliver is a project uh, which is really into the logistical world, a platform. And it has very interesting, uh, very interesting partners, and it's really trying to solve a very interesting problem. And uh, Lars Breitfeld, you're the director of the, um, of the project. What does Deliver do? We enable global trade, to keep it very short. Um, That's very, very <laughs> so, yeah. Very short. Um, just out of interest, in, in, uh, we focus on the buyer and the seller, uh, where the goods are in a container moving from A to B. Um, that sounds simple. In practice, 28 parties are involved. There's a lot of inefficiency and intransparency, mm -hmm. usually created by distrust, um, where blockchain technology is um, uh, primarily focused to solving that problem, exchanging assets and information in a trusted and, and secure way. We saw that in, in many, many different worlds. We, we saw it in, in car cars, which were basically uh, transported all over Europe. We saw it at cargo. Um, there are a lot of parties. There's a lot of information. You're not going to tell me that with a container you still have paper information uh, in the normal flow, right? I am. I'm, I'm extremely sorry, but uh, there's a, a very heavy dependency on paper. Um, and we also come across a lot of examples where the physical goods coming out of Asia 30 days at sea, arrive in the Netherlands or Europe before the paper flow does. Yeah, you say you have a huge container boat of which has 15,000 containers. Yeah. In how many hours does that uh, does that get uh, uh, basically get uh, processed in the harbor of Rotterdam? Now nowadays, with with the fully automated terminals, uh, the, the big big ships you can turn them around in about eight hours. Uh, takes billions of investments in 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 terminals, ports. Uh, uh, but the paper flow, but the paper flow is slower than the physical flow. That's going by mail. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're building a platform as deliver, where you basically have all the different parties which are involved that can be plugged in. Absolutely. And what we focus on is the interoperability between uh, uh, initiatives uh, in the new world in, in uh, global trade. There's people making um, um, uh, dashboards, uh, AI-driven or IoT solutions, standalone great tools. If you combine them, uh, you start to create extreme value for the buyer and the seller, creating transparency, uh, added value, solving daily pain in, um, in the operational uh, trade. We're going to talk about a little bit more about that uh, that part. First, let's talk about Deliver. Uh, who are the partners who, st who started Deliver? Uh, we're a, a bit of a strange band of brothers. Um, uh, I'm coming from Samsung SDS, the uh, tech and logistics uh, side of the Samsung group. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ABN Emro, Finance, and Port of Rotterdam from uh, the, the maritime world. These three uh, partners, well, we know ABN Embro, we know the harbor of Rotterdam, but uh, Samsung SDS, um, I mean, how many people work at Samsung total and how many people work at Samsung, uh, the logistical arm? Um, in total, uh, Samsung as a group, about 300,000, and uh, we are with uh, 4,500. Okay, so it's a big part of the company is doing logistical service. And you're not doing that only, you're not doing that for Samsung only, but you're doing that for many different uh, clients. Correct. Of course, uh, Samsung companies uh, is a big, big chunk of our customer portfolio, but we are um, uh, an, a regular logistic service provider at one hand and an IT service provider at another hand, um, servicing the open market, indeed. Okay. So, and, f and the interest for uh, Samsung SDS to work on a deliver kind of platform is because? Uh, it's, it's two ways. Um, we are a one-part IT company already active in, in blockchain, especially in Korea and uh, Southeast Asia. Um, that's one. Uh, and we are a one of the facilitators or actors in, in supply chains. Um, so there we have uh, a two-bladed knife uh, where we find our uh, uh, spot in, uh, in the deliver uh, project. And then together with a bank and a an harbor to basically make this broad a logistical platform. How, how did these people find each other? Now the linking pin was Port of Rotterdam, where uh, ABN Emro and, and us have, have a relationship with. Um, and it is indeed strange. Um, uh, the Korean guy, the, 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 the banker and, and, uh, and the port boss, okay. but um, everybody has its own uh, reasons, but they come together in being active uh, and being in the forefront of uh, uh, blockchain platforms 
that's where the world is coming from. Everybody has its own interest, but it's coming together in, in, a, in a very good way uh, in this platform. Interesting. Okay, so we have this platform where all the yeah. digitalization of the trade uh, process. What role does blockchain play in this uh, in this uh, in this platform? It's under the hood of the car. It's very important. It's the engine that drives the platform, um, and it brings the standard attributes of blockchain: digitization, trust, transparency. Uh, what we put in there, uh, combining that, is a digital notary, mm -hmm. which makes that you can arrange how to share. Uh, trusted information uh, and the interoperability doesn't matter if if there's a solution which is old-fashioned database or if it's ethereum or hyperledger we make it interoperable which makes that usually blockchain solutions are siloed geographically or functionally mm -hmm. um, by connecting them to the platform you can combine iot with trade insurance uh, 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 an electronic bill of lading with uh, an ecmr etc etc what phase is the project in right now? Um, yesterday we got our funding for 2020. 2020 is going to bring us to an independent company with a minimum viable platform. Uh, that means we're real, uh, we're acting in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and for us, a bit of time to come with the investment proposal to our, to our principles. Uh, and okay, so the funding is completely arranged. Uh, wh what about the, the, the platform? Where is it now? Um, we're, we're operating, we're running pilots for uh, a couple of small medium enterprise companies uh, active in global trade. Yeah, uh, but I mean, you're, you're small and medium. I asked what, what size is a small and medium sized company? You, to you told me one of them. How much uh, revenue do they have? Yeah, it's it's uh, classified as small medium enterprise. They do three billion in revenue in, on a year um, in, in the vegetable and produce uh, uh, industry. Um, maybe not that high invested uh, in IT as a, a global corporate like uh, like others are, mm -hmm. um, but a serious partner in, in global trade. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're working with them in, in good partnership to find out how to apply the platform, where is their value, what are they missing, what can we create, um, and that's going rather well. These uh, 28 uh, people which basically are involved in or, or companies and organizations which are involved when one... Uh, container goes from one to the other. How interested in blockchain are these? You know, the the, the Dutch customs or the, the Korean customs. How many? How, how many of those are interested in that kind of technology? And they basically apply a certain amount of trust in that thought of that technology. From from our experience in in Korea, uh, the adaptation of blockchain with with regulators and authorities is a little bit higher than it is uh, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. But we know we, we have the interest of, of the government, customs, etc. We're working with them via the Dutch Blockchain Coalition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're in the process of creating a, a sandbox, as they call it. Uh, so there's great interest uh, from both. Yeah, you, you, so a logistical or an, uh, an, uh, a legal sandbox? Because, yeah. I mean, you can do all the, the transactions and, and may verify them, but they have to be legally, uh, they have to be legally applied to your, uh, they, they have to trust it legally and also by law. Absolutely. Uh, we, ca we can think of a lot of technologies, but there's legislation that Dutch Customs need to, needs to adhere to. Um, and whatever we, we create in a new world, it needs to fit legislation to start with, uh, because you, you cannot change that overnight. So that, that is holding us back a little bit, but I, I have to say a party like, like Dutch Customs is acting as a proper business partner uh, within their limitations that they have and, and ours. Uh, we're working towards a, w a very workable solution. It's very interesting. Yeah, you said that um, it takes a while to change this industry, right? Yeah. I mean, because of the, the, the bill of loading and the bill of ownership. I mean, these kinds of papers, how old are they? Now, the first version uh, is, is 700 years old. Um, in principle, the document is still the same. The paper it's printed on is different. We went from old-fashioned, uh, how do you call it, percament to uh, modern paper, but the physical document never really changed for the bill of lading, letter of credit, and we're still shipping it around the world in a separate flow next to the goods traded uh, that went from spices to uh, toys from China, but that process never changed. So and and when we digitize it and use blockchain to basically increase trust, you can, it really can change dramatically. And what kind of what what kind of goods will that bring us? 
um well it 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 not not sure what so what when we basically make it when we digitize it and we add blockchain to it and it ends and everybody works together how different will the bl uh, the, the process uh, be because the physical process is already incredibly efficient and cheap yeah. what will that change bring us now the, a rough estimation i think a quarter of the time in global trade is spent on uh, just just uh, a non-added value work sharing information sharing documents where's my boat where's the vessel um to uh, a certain extent that can all disappear um so you can really start working on uh, the things that matter optimizing uh, uh, making sure that you're on time you're you're uh, fulfilling your customers requirements instead of uh, trying to figure out where your container is. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.